perhaps you need another shot. So, as I said in my review, there were a few very specific things that bugged me about Man of Steel, but all of them were, are far too spoilerific to be mentioned in the review. So, here they are. I'd like to once again state that my knowledge of Superman comes from the movies, so a lot of what I may complain about could be par for the course with the mythos, in which case I guess I just have a problem with the mythos. But, taking the film on its own merits, this is what bugged me. And this is your final spoiler warning. Are you ready? Then I shall begin. So, in the prologue on Krypton, Jor-El and Zod square off and engage in fisticuffs. Uh, the sequence itself was quite well done, and everything about it really pulled me into the moment. Uh, the music, the choreography, how it was shot. It was a great little bit of action, which resulted in Zod getting utterly humiliated. I loved it. And it didn't bug me at all until about the film's halfway point. Where Jor-El tells Clark and us about Krypton. See, what makes Kal-El so special is that he was Krypton's first natural birth in centuries. For a few thousand years, every Kryptonian had been birthed in a Genesis chamber, and their entire life had been basically decided for them. They were born to be scientists, or soldiers, or engineers, or whatever it was. Kal-El represented something quite powerful, and, as an aside, one of the few things I have any belief in. Self-determination. But... You see, now I apply what I now know to what happened in the prologue. Jor-El, Krypton's top scientist, beat the shit out of General Zod, Krypton's top soldier. Based on what Space USB stick Daddy tells Clark slash us, that is basically the equivalent of Sheldon Cooper beating up an adept as a status. The next thing I had a problem with was the last days of Krypton. Now, the destruction of Krypton I had no problem with. It was brought about by some questionable energy policies that involved mining the planet core. And governmental decisions fucking up the world? <laughs> the very idea. But the near extinction of the Kryptonian race? Please. During jor info dump, we're told that Kryptonians at once spread across the stars, colonising distant worlds, and then, for no reason I can recall being told, they stopped. Really? I mean, it's already established in the prologue that they still have access to stellar travel of some sort, because they fuzz Zod and his merry band into the Phantom Zone, uh, not to mention Jura sending Kal-El on a merry jaunt to Earth. But they don't have any planetary escape ships, or any form of interplanetary craft, not even for colonies established in their own home system. Fuck off. The next two bits I had on my list, I'm going to sort of mesh into one because they are somewhat interconnected. So, during the prologue, jor makes a big deal over Earth's young sun. Uh, that, being saturated in its radiation, Kal-El would become a god to the people of Earth. Okay. It takes Kal-El 33 years and a bit of prompting to become Superman. That's fine. My problem comes when Zod and his troops turn up, and become strong enough to pummel Kal-El into oblivion after 33 minutes. And with that, I'm left to wonder what it is that gives Superman his powers. Because Zod, etc., spend most of their time on Earth wearing full-body battle armor, complete with breather masks, pumping around Kryptonian atmosphere. But Kryptonian atmosphere made Superman as weak as a human. So, if it's exposure to Earth's atmosphere that gives Superman his powers, how did Zod and his merry peeps get superpowers? despite being in sealed suits. More to the point, how does Superman operate in space without dying? And if it's the sun that gives Superman his powers, why did exposure to Kryptonian atmosphere rob him of those powers? Oh, sorry, except for right at the end, when he needs to destroy a Kryptonian terraforming thing, where it filled the South Indian Ocean with clouds to block out the sun, and indeed filled it up with Kryptonian atmosphere. Oh, yeah, then it didn't matter. Oh. Blah. Next up, Snyder managed to do something that only one other person, Graham McNeil, in my experience, has managed to do. He made a fight between super beings boring. Every action sequence between Superman and one of the inexplicably supercharged Krypton troopers ends up being little more than one Kryptonian punching another Kryptonian through a building. But the first time it happens, it's a spectacle. But after that, it's repetitious tedium that I was sick of long before the action ended. 
I mean, personally, I would have had them trading blows like normal people, except that when they connect, there's a sound like a thunderclap and a shockwave, and that's what starts levelling the surroundings, the force of the impacts. And, finally, Zod's end. Now, I had no problem at all with Zod dying. In fact, I was actually expecting something else, like Zod escaping, or somehow losing his powers and being sentenced to life imprisonment for murder, attempted genocide, and being a very naughty boy. So, when Superman snaps Zod's neck, complete, I would like to point out, with Thunderclap and Shockwave, I genuinely thought, nice. But, let's now sum up what that means. Zod, trained from birth to be the perfect soldier, had his ass handed to him by Sheldon, then got his ass killed by a farm boy. So, yeah, that's, that's basically what annoyed me about Man of Steel, on top of the ropey dialogue and often bad acting. And it is such a shame, because there is a damn good film in there somewhere. <laughs>